Hello everyone, Coach Andy here with Runners Connect. On today's Coach Chat, we are gonna be talking about when you should retire your running shoes. So this is a big concept when we talk about injury prevention, um, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm sure, you know, this is something that I'm guilty of. I try to make my shoes last as long as I possibly can. And so sometimes I'll start to feel some of those aches and pains creep in. And that's when I typically see that as a warning sign. And then I also am like, oh wait, how long have I had these shoes? And that's that tends to be something that gives me that kind of clue of like, hey, let's let's look, get a new pair of shoes. But you know, so depending on how often that we run it and all of those things, it's gonna change how long we know when we should be moving them in and out. Um, there's typical things that we we know, you know, about typically that you'll read that somewhere around 200 to 300 miles on your shoes is when we should be exchanging those and getting new pairs. Of course, that's also gonna be super dependent upon the type of shoe that you are wearing. So we'll go through that a little bit. We'll also, I have a ton of shoes here right next to me. So I'll pull a few of those up and we'll go through and we'll look at the soles and different things like that so we can kind of give ourselves a good understanding of when we should be changing out our shoes. Uh, we'll also kind of talk a little bit about how we can spot some wear patterns that could be problematic, that could be causing injuries. So stuff like that. So essentially, that we're gonna talk all about you know things that we can also do to help increase the length of our shoes so that we can have them longer, save ourselves a little bit of money, and we'll talk about what to look for and how we know when they're absolutely need to be thrown out and when we should be getting a new pair. To start out, like I said, shoes typically are gonna last, running shoes are typically gonna last about 200 to 300 uh, miles on them. That's gonna be your traditional trainer. Uh, for the most part, the Alpha Fly, some of these um, foam shoes, I'll grab a pair real quick so I can show you. This is a pair of the Alpha Flies. So these types of shoes, this foam is actually what's going to wear out quickest. And so that's why these might actually have a little less shelf life is that we're gonna start to see a lot of compression within the shoe itself in the foam. So that's what we're looking for um, when we wanna retire these is, is the foam not giving us what we need from it anymore. And at that point we know we've gotta get a new pair of these. Um, the good thing about a shoe like this is that maybe they're not great for racing beyond you know 100 miles or something like that's what I've heard about these shoes about 100 miles. You may notice to yourself when you're racing in them that they lose the bounce a little bit. So that's something that you'll be able to kind of decipher for yourself. You may get longer on, on your shoes depending on how you run, um, where your foot strike is, all those different things are gonna help to decide. If your heel's striking a lot more, you're gonna get a lot more compression in this section and that's gonna kind of make it lose its bounce a little bit quicker. So these are things that you're gonna have to kind of almost decipher for yourself. But the nice part about these is that even if the foam is compressing a little bit, it's gonna impact potentially the, the, the benefits you're getting from the shoe itself. But the other thing that we can think about with these is that even if we're not running as fast in them, we can always transition these to be a workout shoe when we've when we've kind of retired them from racing. So that's something that I typically recommend because you know the foam is going to wear out faster probably on this type of shoe than the sole. So when we look at the sole of a shoe like this, we're looking to see if there's any spots that are completely worn down and smooth. So on this pair, this pair is had less than 100 miles on it, so not going to be super beat up or anything like that. But I can see just looking at it that and you might not be able to see just based on the camera lighting um, that this doesn't have a whole lot of wear and tear on the bottom, and so that's how I know. Know that the shoe can still be utilized where beyond if I retired it today it could still be utilized as a workout flat now it's going to you're gonna retire it from being a workout shoe when you start to notice the tread starting to kind of really get flat or you start to see the foam becoming visible um, coming out of the, the actual sole because your sole of your shoe is gonna have a little bit more stiffer a stiffer a stiffer base to it so that the it protects the foam a little bit so that's something to keep in mind so this is your racing shoe this is an alpha fly this is going to be a shoe that we need to replace more often because it's not gonna the foam is going to be the what breaks down so um but you're not racing in it as much so as long as you're not training and racing in your alpha fly all the time uh, you should be fine. Um, not saying you shouldn't do any workouts in your shoes before you race in them. I think it can be beneficial to do a few key workouts in your racing shoes, but if you're reserving them for racing, don't use them for all of your hard efforts. Reserve them for racing so we can get them to last longer and we can use them for feeling our best on race day. So that's one way for speed shoes, especially ones that are going to be this expensive to increase the longevity is to, you know, start to cycle them out once they've reached their point of having used them for too long for racing. Um, and then also reserve them as much as as much as possible for racing 
um, and only do a few key workouts in the racing flat. Uh, all right. So moving on from there, um, trainers are ones that are gonna actually have a lot more longevity to them, especially ones that are a little bit bulkier, a little bit heavier, more cushioned. Those are gonna have a lot more life to them. Um, some of these lightweight ones that are you know, made from really soft materials, they may actually wear out a little bit faster. So keep in mind, you may wanna, you, this is something you're also gonna have to pay attention to yourself. Um, you know, check, you know, when you're running, if you start to feel weird aches and pains that you're not used to, you'd never feel that are kind of in your lower leg, that's where we're gonna feel them first. So oftentimes when the shoe is wearing out, we're gonna feel lower leg pains because they're the first point of contact. They're the first that are they're the first part of your body that's taking the brunt force of the ground. And you know, running shoes, especially training shoes, are going to have a lot more supportive material in there to help kind of cushion that that impact. And so when that starts to wear out, that's where we're going to see more of that impact being transferred into the leg as opposed to being transferred into the shoe. So that's one thing to look at. Let me pull up a few pairs of trainers here. We can look at them um, just to get a sense of what the shoe will look like itself. So I have a pair that I'm running in now, a pair that I ran in before, and also, an, uh, no, I didn't bring that one up here. So these are shoes that I was running in before. Um, so these are a Saucony, and I've also found, you may find that different shoes wear quicker than others. So that's also something to kind of keep in mind if you're trying a new brand, start to track the life of that shoe. Track your miles on it, figure out about how many months that typically lasts, figure out wh how many miles until you transfer it out because I think sometimes just getting in the habit of being like, I'm retiring the, these at this point because I know this specific shoe wears out by that point is a good way to kind of stay ahead of getting any injuries from popping up because of the, the age of a shoe. So for the most part, we're looking at this pair of trainers here. This one I retired a bit ago. And one of the things that I look at, and this is my, this is my problem leg. So this is my leg, or it's not necessarily my problem leg, but it's the leg that I plant more on. So one thing that I notice in my shoes, and you'll see it from the side angle here, is that it's almost smooth down to the foam on this side. Um, if you look at the actual tread there, it is basically smooth right here. So that's where I'm seeing some wear and tear on that being kind of uh, a warning sign that maybe I need to replace these. If you see this tread getting smooth and then you see the tread missing and you actually see the white material coming through, that's another sign that we need to replace those shoes because um, we're losing some of this, this support uh, from that's also helpful kind of to, from the compression. Okay, so that's something to look at. You may notice, and I'm gonna show you my other shoe because this one has less wear on it, the stark differences between this shoe and this shoe. So you see how there is a there is a definite wear pattern different there difference there. So that just shows me that I'm wearing more on one side than the other, which is pretty common. A lot of us have some different imbalances that cause that. And so don't only look at one of your shoes. Look at your shoe that is probably the side that you're utilizing the most often. That's gonna be the shoe that we have to pay attention to the most. It sucks because you know this shoe, it looks like it doesn't need, even need to be replaced. But um, because of this foot, that's where we're, that's where I know that it's it's definitely time. Um, another place that you may look commonly is up here in the front of the tread here. So it, this is getting a little smooth on my on my bad side. Um, this side is actually looking fairly fairly fine. Not not too many issues there. Um, no issues on the back side either. We can look at the side angle there. It's getting low, but we can still see the tread and the way that it moves. Um, and so that doesn't show any warning signs, but it's definitely this foot that is. Um, some other things you may wanna pay attention to is just where the fabric is wearing too. So um, for me, I have on this foot was getting a little bit of a hole right there. I don't think if you, I don't think you can see that super well. And then also up here. So I think this is probably coming from way I was landing and kind of kicking this part of my shoe. We still don't want, we don't want this kind of stuff to start happening. So another thing to look for is that. Um, and then also just that wear in the side of the shoe. Uh, we don't want anything sticking out, poking out, doing anything weird there. So keep, keep an eye on that kind of stuff. So this is a pair of shoes I have retired. Um, now, I found when I switched to this pair of Nikes that I had a lot more longevity to 
this shoe. And so I feel like I'm able to get a little bit more length of time running in this pair. Um, so that's one thing that I have noticed between the two different brands I've been wearing. So this pair um, already has kind of a thinner tread to begin with, but what I'm looking for again is they have these little bumps on the bottom, looking for it to get too smooth and that's when I know like I need to change these out. Um, the old pair I had of this, this is my bad side, so I'm starting to get to that point on this shoe, is, is that I'm starting to get to down to the white, just a I'm getting close, not all the way there, but I'm getting a little close and I can see it because I can see some of the white White actually peeling back a little bit here so that means that I'm getting on this side I'm probably pressing a little bit more I'm probably getting a little bit of this compressed so this is gonna be something I'm also looking for on this pair of shoes is where are my wear patterns happening and so it's for me it's always on the back heel that I'm seeing that I'm kind of landing a little bit there so, and this is the pair of shoes that I train in. You may notice, depending on if you change out your shoes, so if you wear one shoes for your, your easy runs and one pair of shoes for your harder efforts, you may actually wear in different spots. So for the most part with my trainers, I see a little bit more of that back, that heel wearing on the, my bad side than I do on, and this actually looks a little bit more even compared to my other one. So this one actually shows a lot more even wear pattern. So it may be that, that we're getting a little bit more balanced push off in this pair of shoe, which is great. Um, but I'm still getting some of that wear and tear towards that outside edge. So I may be also nearing time to kind of get, get a new pair of these as well. Um, but those are some comparisons that we can see. Um, and then you can also kind of look at the foam compression. So we can see some lines in the foam just a little bit. I know it's a little bit more difficult to see over the camera, but these are also warning signs of like this is getting pretty compressed so that the cushion's not gonna be quite as, as stable for us uh, going forward. So that's something to look at too. Now, um, another one of the pair of shoes that I've been doing some workouts in is this Nike Zoom Fly or Streak Fly. Um, and so doing a lot of workouts in them. And the one thing I've noticed with this one is some separation between the fabric and the shoe itself. Okay. So that is something that I'm probably going to want to replace these sooner than later on. And this could be a flaw in this pair of shoes. This may not be the, like for, this may not be the case for all of them. I may not see this happening every time, but this is going to show me too, that my shoe is separating from from this part of the shoe, which we don't want to happen, because it is gonna impact how your how your foot is within that shoe. And so we don't want that to be happening, so I'm probably going to need to get a new pair of these instead of continuing to wear them. So pay attention to that a little bit, um, and don't let that become a huge problem. Other thing with this one is that I can see how it is getting real beat up through this section here. It's getting kind of frayed. So that's showing me too that this is starting to get um, almost almost not helpful. So in the foam on this one comes almost down to the bottom of the shoe. So it's it's pretty it's pretty heavy on the foam here, and there's just a little bit of support back here for uh, that's a little bit more stable. And then this is just directly right there on that foam. So I'm probably going to get more compression because of that. Now I notice when I wear these types of shoes that I tend to wear more on the front because this is a shoe that I'm doing more of my speed workouts in. So from that angle, we don't see a ton of compression. So I don't have, or don't see a ton of smoothness. So that's good from that standpoint that this shoe is still probably okay to continue on. But the problem, more of the problem is the separation for me. So that's probably gonna be more of an indicator of the fact that I need to change it out than anything. Um, but it's not happening on this shoe, which is why I'm thinking it may just be, you know, a little bit of a flaw in this specific pair. So. Um, again, yeah, we don't see a ton of that wear on the front, which is good because that's what we're trying to look for, especially in a, in a workout shoe where you're probably a little bit more up on your toes. Um, if, if that's how, not everybody runs that way, but for me, I run a little bit more up on my toes when I'm running fast. So my wear is going to be a little bit more here and less of it's going to be back here on this heel section. So I don't actually see the same wear pattern uh, in the back as I do on my training shoes when I'm wearing one of these. So that's something something to note for sure. So good to know how you how you wear on different shoes, so that you know what to look for when you're when you're thinking, do I need a new pair? Now um, here is another pair that I have used for workouts, and this is going to show a little bit more clearly some of that smoothing in the front, and you'll be able to see that there's almost nowhere 
on the back side of these. So um, this pair is a New Balance 1500. So you can see how there's, you can barely see the triangles in this section here. That's because I'm probably putting a lot of my weight here. So this is where it's wearing the most. I've mostly worn these on the track. So even more so it's gonna be on smooth ground. Um, and then you also see a lot of wearing here up in the front where that's also pretty smooth. So I have retired these ones as well. Haven't been using them lately. But then you'll look at the heel here and there's almost no wear whatsoever. Okay. So again, showing another example of how um, there, we might have to look in different spots for the different types of shoes that we're wearing. Um, now I did want to look at two of the same pair of shoes side by side that a uh, newer pair or actually I have two pairs of the Nikes, Nikes that are the exact same pair and one is brand new. So we're going to kind of look at and see kind of what are the actual changes that we see differentially between the two pairs. So I think that can be nice to kind of see side by side. You know, it's hard to look at a shoe and be like, how much has it actually changed? How much compression is there actually there? Um, if you have two of the same pair, we can kind of actually look at that, especially if there's one pair that we haven't worn at all. So let's pull that out. Um, All right, so here is a brand new one of these. All right, so here's a brand new one of these, exact same shoe. Um, it's gonna have a little bit more stack height because of the, the because it hasn't been worn at all. So you can kind of see that a little bit. It's not a huge difference, but there is a little bit more to it because of the fact that I haven't been wearing it as much, or I haven't worn it at all. So I can see that there is a little bit more of that. There's gonna be, let's see. Yeah, yeah. so there's almost no compress. It's a lot stiffer through the heel, so you can see that. There's a lot more stiffness. Um, we can kind of just see the differences here when we put them side by side. Um, so, and then you look at them this way. You can see how there's compression through here, right there. Or no, there's no compression through there, but then you see it on this side, having that compression right through here. Okay, so that's showing me that there is happening. There is some wear, there is some loss in some of that, that um, stiffness in the foam. So um, that's going to show me that this one will have to be retired at some point uh, coming soon just because of this little line that I'm seeing through here. Okay. So um, another thing that I think is super important to point out with these shoes is, and I think I mentioned this, you know, tracking the numbers in your shoes. A nice thing is that you can now do this. You can do this through your Garmin. There's actually an option to put input what shoes you wore for your different runs. And if this is something that would be helpful for you to make sure that you're staying on top of it, um, you can go into Garmin and you can put in the pair of shoes that you're wearing. You can also put in a, several pairs of shoes. You can make one pair your default. So if you're doing most of your running in one shoe, you can make that your default. And then you can can on days that you're wearing a different shoe, just go in and change that to that other shoe that you've already kind of already loaded into your system. Uh, that way you can actually have it and then you can set up notes on your Garmin to notify you when you've reached X number of miles on that shoe. Um, so I think that can be a really helpful way to stay on top of it. Another really good way to actually increase the longevity of your shoes is to alternate them. So um, buy two pairs of the same trainer that you like to run in a lot and you can alternate wearing one versus the other. I also find that to be a really good tactic in the summer when you're running and the heat and all the sweat and all the things can just make your shoes soaping, sopping wet and we don't want to wear a wet pair of running shoes the next day. So it can be nice to also have a, a a drier pair that you can alternate with while the other pair dries out. So that can be a nice way to have it. That's like just extra benefit there. But um, there is some evidence that when you change out your shoes and alternate them day by day, that it increases the longevity because the compressive foam has, um, or the foam has a lot more time to recover and expand back as opposed to it doesn't have as much time. So it just keeps compressing and pressing and pressing. And then it just stays in that position after a while. So changing them out can actually help with that a little bit. So um, you can typically, typically just do that with by buying the same pair of trainers at the same time, buying two pairs. Um, if you wanna have two different types of trainers, so if you wanna wear one that's maybe a little bit lower drop and one that's a little bit higher drop, just so you're kind of changing the stimulus on your foot, that can be something that you try um, and that can help a little bit. Just don't do anything drastically different. So don't run in a 12 and then run in a, a zero the next day that's gonna be such a wild difference. I don't, it may, it may help. It may not. I don't know if that'll end up causing injury, but we do know those small millimeter changes in different shoes can impact how we feel in them. So, uh, that's kind of a basic general synopsis of like, what, what are we looking for when we're looking to see what is our, um, what is the wear on our shoes? What are we looking for? 
and a, how can we track it? How can we increase the longevity? Um, so I also wanted to share while we're talking here, uh, one of the articles that we have on our website that talks a little bit more about that. I think we had a couple of notes on this post, so I'm gonna pull it up here and we can read those really quickly. So um, Mar Margie says, how about running inserts? Can we keep using those through multiple pairs of running shoes? Yes. If you have running inserts, you can exchange those and put them in your new running shoes when you get a new pair. That's totally fine. I would also say that they also can have some wear to them. So if you're if you're wearing some shoe inserts, maybe to kind of keep your arch up or something like that, then you know eventually the the stress that your foot's probably still pushing into that, and at some point it may start to change the way that it's effect how effective it is. So you also want to make sure that you exchange out those running shoe inserts as needed. Um, to also help to make sure that you're not you're not running those into the ground because I think those also have some longevity to them. You may be able to ask if you if you've worked with um, if you have a PT that you work with or you have somebody or whoever gave you the inserts if they have some insight into the length of time that you should be using running shoe inserts then that can be helpful. I had some orthotics when I was in college. And um, I pretty much wore them until they were getting holes in them. I don't know how effective that is. Um, and then I w thought about getting a new pair, but I had graduated and I didn't really want to take on the expense and my feet were actually doing fine. I did more uh, foot strengthening stuff to help, um, help some of that stuff. And I didn't need an orthotic after that point, which was fantastic. Um, but... Uh, you do want to make sure that we don't run those into the ground. So if you're working with orthotics or using shoe, shoe inserts, um, make sure that they are still functioning the way they should be by, you know, not using them until they're falling apart. Okay. And that, that's my one thing I would say. You can still swap them between shoes as long as they're still doing their job. So um, David mentions, I don't have a question, but this is a subject that I put more thought and planning into than anything else. So important. I used to keep track of miles on my shoes, but I have found that a mile does not equal a mile. A race mile is different from an easy mile and trail is different from treadmill. I go entirely by feel and if, a, if I feel a shoe will give me sore feet, they go back on the shelf. Um, yeah, so I think that's important to say, yeah, that is a big thing. You know, you're, when you're running an easy mile, you may, you're gonna be wearing on your shoes differently the way I mentioned how you're gonna be wearing a little bit different on your racing shoes or your workout shoes versus your easy running shoes. If you, if you do swap them out, um, you're gonna see that there's a little bit more of a different wear pattern. You might be harder on them when you race than you are when you run easy, or you may be harder on them when you run easy. Um, it just depends on your gait and how you run all those different things. So it's really, it is a lot of it is by feel. And I think it's important to kind of, you know, you can track some of these things. And especially if you're wearing one shoe just for races and one shoe for your training stuff, uh, that makes it a little bit easier to know what the longevity is of those different types of things that you are doing. So if you're tracking how many miles you're running, you can correlate that to how you feel with them and then come up with your own numbers that you can utilize with your own pairs of shoes. Um, and you don't have to stick by that. You can always just, you know, you can kind of keep that in mind. You can say, hey, I know I'm getting up to around X number of miles on this pair of shoes. I typically need to exchange them around that time. And then you can continue to kind of see how do they feel? How do I feel? Am I getting aches and pains? Do I need to exchange these? Put them up on the shelf. That, that, that can help you. But I think it sometimes can help you to know, like, uh, just to be mindful and be aware that that could be happening soon if you're at, at nearing your mileage, you know, max. For a pair of shoes so but yes very much important that we keep it easy or we keep it by feel for the most part because nobody wants to spend more money than they have to on running shoes they're getting they're expensive these days and uh, we really just want to make sure that we we can maximize the time that we can use to use them so don't put any any time limit on them if you're not feeling any different in them um, so I think that's also important to note so all right well that pretty much covers everything let me flip back to the regular screen and I'll see if we've got any questions here. If you have any ideas of anything you wanna hear about on a future coach chat, uh, feel free to reach out to me or add them in the comments on any of the posts and I will make sure that we get those covered. So um, with that, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and I will see you all again next week. Bye everyone.